Let's Science is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. We live in a universe of scientific wonders. Every day, scientists are inching towards breakthroughs which can change our lives. We're playing our small part in sharing these wonders with you. That's why today is a fine day for science. So let's science. So, Caroline, I'm actually going to preamble your what you're about to say with this. It actually probably has nothing to do with what you're about to talk about. <laughs> However, years ago, I, had a, I shared a classroom office with some colleagues and there was like the smallest gap between our building and mm-hmm. the building next door to us. Mm-hmm. And when you opened the window of our office on one side, all you got was building on the other side. You could really <laughs> touch, bring out your hand through the window and touch the building. But when you looked really? down... Yeah. And, we, wow. yeah. and when we looked down on the ground, there was a small fern plant growing there. Mm-hmm. And so we called it Ferny. <laughs> and, and so until those buildings were raised and taken down, we used to feed Ferny by dropping some you know, oh, like water, tea, coffee, Fernie. whatever. And Ferny was quite happy and healthy until, actually, I don't want to think about what happened to him. Anyway, <laughs> so, however, in my office now is a plant. I've got a pot plant there. It's not a fern, but it, it's an office plant. And I asked one of my classes, what should we call it? So they came up with the wonderful name of Planty. Planty. <laughs> so, yeah. They borrow that from the Lego movie. <laughs> Planty. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, Planty yeah, the yeah. 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 So Caroline, <laughs> tell us all about the science of ferns. After this, you are going to be wondering what the genome size of Planty is. Then I'll explain yeah. why. <laughs> so <laughs> did you know that the largest known genome belongs to a tiny fern? So... This tiny fern has broken the record for the largest known genome in anything living yet. It was reported in the journal iScience on May 31st and it's a study to measure the genome and it was performed by scientists from the Royal Botanic Gardens in Kew and the Institut Botanique de Barcelona in Spain. And I love that accent, Caroline. Was so I hope it was correct. Yeah, as, a result, <laughs> as a result, this little fern is a new record holder for the largest amount of DNA stored in its nucleus of any organism living on the planet. So give it a little round of applause. Yeah. Um, yay. <laughs> the species of fork fern, of which there are six known species, found in New Caledonia in southwest Pacific Ocean, about 750 miles away from Australia, and is quite small and unassuming. This little plant grows up on the branches and trunks of larger forest plants and is only 15 centimetres long. But It has 50 times more DNA than humans, measuring a huge 100 metres when it is all unravelled from the nucleus. So quick biology lesson here. Yes, it's quite long. It's quite long. So here's a little quick biology lesson because it will help later on. So there are two types of cells in living cells. There are the eukaryotes and the prokaryotes. All the biology fans will know what I'm talking about. But for those who don't, eukaryotes are those organisms with cells that have a clearly defined nucleus. And this is where the genetic material is stored in the cell. And this goes for organisms such as plants and fungi and animals like us. And Yeah, we've done a mushroom episode. Yeah, all the jokes. Yep, Yep. that's right. Yeah. And then you've got your prokaryotes, which are organisms that are made of cells that don't have a nucleus, and their DNA floats free in the cell. And these guys are unicellular, and they are those such as blue-green algae and bacteria, and their DNA is containing little rings that just float around the cell. And I could talk about that all day, but that's not (laughs) what I'm talking about. (laughs) It is such a fascinating topic. But let's get back to the fern DNA. So basically, this group of scientists took cells from the six fork fern species found growing in New Caledonia and then isolated the DNA from the nuclei of the fern leaf cells. They then dyed the DNA found in the nuclei with a fluorescent dye and compared how much the nuclei fluoresced compared to those plants with similar genomes. And basically, the more DNA that dye that bound to DNA, the more DNA there was. 
And from the research, and from there, the researchers were able to calculate the size of the DNA of each fork burn. So the winner was T. oblanceolata, and it has a genome with the length of 160 billion nucleobases. Goodness me. Uh, Wow. Are 160 gigabase pairs, and those are the base units that make up the actual DNA itself. So imagine. So what you're saying you know, is there's a few. <laughs> there's a few, quite a lot. So when you see the picture of a D- double helix representing the DNA, I think we're yeah, all yeah. pretty much familiar with that. Yeah. So each side is made up of those little bases paired on the opposite on, on each side, and it's got like a little rung in the middle. So this guy has 160 billion Goodness me. of wow. those. Whoa. And humans, in comparison, have 3.1 gigabase pairs across its 23 chromosomes. Mm, so mm, 160 mm. billion compared to 3.1 gigabase that's, pairs. That's a lot. So, I feel okay. like the plant's going to take over at some point, aren't they? That's what we're yeah. talking about. Yeah. But all the looks of it, yeah. Well, I will tell you more about the plant and maybe you can de- decide if that's true or not. So <laughs> <laughs> this plant has actually achieved three Guinness World Record titles for the largest plant genome, the largest genome, and the largest fern genome for the amount of DNA in a nucleus. So it's pretty can good you imagine, Can you imagine getting a Guinness World Record for doing nothing but being? Just having a large genome. It's awesome. I want that. I want to just, yeah. just for existing. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, most plants have a relatively small genome, but the study team wanted to know more about plants with the large genomes and how they evolve and function. Mm, so to mm, date, scientists us. yeah, so today scientists across the globe have estimated the genome sizes of more than 20,000 eukaryotic organisms. So what I mentioned before, cells that have an enclosed DNA in the nucleus, Whoa. and they've revealed a wide range of genome sizes. So and they going back to plants, they found that plants with bigger genomes need bigger cells to house them and they actually take longer to replicate. So it's not actually an advantage. So plants, such plants with large amounts of DNA are usually slow growing perennials. So they are long lived plants. You know, you get your plants that might live for a year and die off and then you get your plants that just live for a while. And they're actually less efficient at photosynthesis. They also require more nutrients, especially nitrogen and phosphate, and those are found in DNA. The characteristics make it harder for them to compete in their environment with plants with smaller genomes and may influence their ability to adapt to changes in the environment, which can increase their risk of extinction. And this is because having large amounts of DNA means that it has to all replicate every time a cell divides and it takes much longer and is very energy intensive as well. So as mentioned, plant genomes vary greatly in size with the largest genomes being 2,500 um, 2, times bigger as the smallest. So one way they think plants can dramatically increase their genomes is by inheriting extra copies of the entire chromosome. Another process, they say, is accumulating long sections of repetitive DNA sequences, and this could be why this plant's genome could have grown so large. It could also be that some plants with giant genomes like this fork fern might have a history of repeated genetic bottlenecks where the species went through multiple rounds of population shrinking and loss of genetic diversity. And the scientists said that during a process like this, a lot of deleterious mutations would accumulate. And this would include a lot of junk DNA that play a role in creating such large genomes. So And they said, too, that this little plant would never get the attention of anyone walking by. It's a small plant. You wouldn't even bother to look at it. But the beauty of the plant is in size. And sometimes big things can come in small packages. Yeah. There we go. I love that. Um, I had that quote in my back pocket in case you didn't. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 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 How many DNAs in that plant, Caroline? Yeah. Yeah. Oh it is a lot of DNA for a tiny plant. Wow. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, I thought that was fascinating. I had yeah, to speak I love about it. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So be nice to your house plants, people. You never know how much. I was more about DNA to say exactly. Yeah. 
Oh, and now think about it. Maybe a slower growing plants have more DNA, DNA. in them than others. You're never yeah, going to look yeah. the same way I again. Say, you know, I, I didn't look outside of my house. There's a plant there. There's a lemon tree. Yeah. There's a Oh, just, just got to say, they're, they're, yeah. are you looking at the plants or are they looking through the window? Yeah, wow. 100%. Wow. Yep. Caroline, I've got some feedback for you as well, by the way. Go for so, it. So on the on your previous science topic of prehistoric giga goose, geese, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, our friends in the Northern Hemisphere in the good old US of A from, on Discord said the following. So this is from Tom Grellinger on, on, on Discord said, can anyone in North America imagine if Canadian geese were this size? To which there was a, to which there was a, a little meme posted with the goose is watching you and it zooms in on this space. <laughs> oh. um, oh. yeah. oh. It's been followed by a comment from Carmen San Diego. I didn't know if she was on Discord. That's amazing. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. yeah. We used, used to play that game when we were young, yeah? Great right. game, great yeah. game says, as someone who owns two geese, I can say with some assurance that our overlords would be cruel taskmasters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we love it. We love it. That's oh, awesome. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, please keep the comments, keep the yeah. humor up. We, yeah, I love good, to keep yeah. everyone thinking yeah. about the little plants and animals around them and how yeah. it could all be different. Yeah. 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 I can imagine people walking past the fern aisle now at Bunnings or yeah. wherever they buy their plants. I know. How much DNA have you got yeah. in your little yeah. nuclei? Yeah. 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 Pick it up and yeah. look. If you've got so much DNA, you pay the bills. <laughs> That's right. That's amazing, Caroline. If anyone has any science feedback about any of our topics, even from a long time ago, please just throw it because we love it. Let Science is brought to you by StarQuest Media and is a fortnightly podcast that brings you the scientific wonders of our universe from a distinctly Catholic point of view. For more from Caroline, Lindsay, and friends, listen to the StarQuest show, Catholics of Oz. Find links from today's show at sqpn.com slash science. And find the Catholics of Oz at sqpn.com slash Oz. Be sure to follow the show in Apple Podcasts, Google Play, wherever you can find podcasts, or on the SQPN YouTube channel. The generous donations of our patrons at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue Let Science and all the shows at StarQuest, which makes our nonprofit mission possible. You can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. Join us next time for more scientific wonders. And thank you for listening to Let's Science on StarQuest. Here's another show on the StarQuest Network you're sure to enjoy. Jimmy Akin's Mysterious World. Find the show wherever fine podcasts are found or at sqpn.com slash mysterious.